Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today in the game of Voxy Not Included, we're gonna go over a little bit of rocketry and show you guys how to start mining with your rocket. Of course, that means today's video, we're gonna be going over the specific rocket module, the drill cone module. Now, of course, the drill cone is going to be the attachment to the rocket that allows you to start harvesting resources from your points of interest. The drill cone rocket is going to be a type of nose cone, which means that it will have to be at the tip of your rocket at the very top, and it requires diamond in order for it to start harvesting. Now, of course, that means your duplicates need to have access to be able to deliver diamond to the drill cone. Otherwise, even with the right setup, it cannot operate. Another thing about the drill cone is that you have to supply it here. There is no other way to supply diamond to the drill cone when you're launched in space, and you're only able to supply it when you're on the rocket platform. Now, before we start talking about the drill cone in and of itself and go more deep into the details and requirements for this, we're actually going to want to go over the points of interest. If you were to be on your star map, as you could see, there's going to be areas on the star map hexagon field that has a name on the tiles. These tiles are typically the points of interest that allows you to either grab an artifact or start harvesting the resource. Now, the drill cone is what's going to enable you to start harvesting the resource. And if you want the artifact specifically, you're going to be looking for the artifact transport module. We have another video that goes over that, so we'll leave that in the link down below. Now, on the star map, you're going to have a lot of different points of interest. And the different points of interest are going to have different sets of resources. However, you may have some repeating sets, of course. Now, I will say that the important takeaways are going to be the total mass of the point of interest, as this will tie to how much resources you could get before you're not going to be able to get a full extraction due to the fact that the point of interest will have to spend time to regenerate. That being said, this total mass remaining is going to be something you're going to want to look at. The next thing is you could actually click on the tooltips. In some cases, you might see something like this tungsten that is actually in liquid form. And if you guys are never sure, you guys could always click on the name and it will pop up the database the form that element is in. I did mention just right now that the point of interest regenerate. That's actually something that's also determined by the world gen seed. You have a role anywhere between a 1% to 2%. 1% being the floor, 2% being the ceiling. What the asteroids actually use that to calculate is how much of the total mass of the asteroid point of interest that they're going to be able to regenerate over the course of a cycle. It's going to be at minimum 1% with a maximum of 2%. However, that value is randomly generated tied to each specific point of interest during when you are randomizing your seed for the start of your playthrough it's anywhere between 50 to 100 cycles for a point of interest to fully recover now a lot of the times before you even start harvesting it's great to take note what the total mass is before you start harvesting so that you know what the max number is now the drill cone rocket actually has a couple of requirements for the drill cone to start drilling this is going to be my prototypical drill cone rocket and of course you're going to have to make sure it's topped off the drill cone in and of itself could only hold a thousand kilograms of diamonds and there is no other resource you could substitute that for there is no way to increase the capacity and there's no way to actually have a way to refill the drill cone once you're off of the rocket platform. That being said, make sure this is topped off before you go into space. The second requirement is going to be a little bit finicky. A lot of the times you're going to want the cargo bay and the liquid cargo tank as your two storage options. Due to the fact that I cannot fit all three and I will get to the reason why. Ideally, if you can build a rocket with all three of the smaller version, and we'll also tell you why you want the smaller version instead, because there's actually going to be requirements that's tied to each point of interest. Each point of interest has a specified cargo module that it requires, specifically either a solid, liquid, or gas cargo module. The problem with it is that even if there is a mixed field here, Let's say that we wanted to go to the Glimmering Asteroid Field. You're actually not able to start harvesting the Wolframite or coal from here until you have a liquid cargo tank. And that's because for whatever reason, the tungsten is required to be picked up. Otherwise, your drill cone will not be able to operate. 
That's going to be the case for things like the helium cloud that actually requires you to have a gas canister and you cannot come here specifically just to grab the water with only a liquid cargo tank. That being said, there is no complete list of every point of interest and what it requires yet, as I don't think I have every rolled point of interest in my playthroughs. So I might be missing something, maybe like space debris or something rare. But for the most part, you're a lot of times 9 out of 10 will be okay to draw cone harvest with a liquid and solid cargo tank. There is going to be a couple of points of interest that does require the uh, gas cargo tank like the helium cloud, but there are very few that actually require that. So unless you want to specifically start harvesting the gas resource from a specific point of interest, you could typically skip out on that. However, it will mean that you will at all cases only be able to use two out of the three cargos. Now, the Drocone rocket is going to be harvesting 7.5 kilograms of resource per second and it will spend 1.5 kilograms of diamond per second. So in a perfect world, if you had all the cargo for the specific points of interest as resources and you spend all of your diamonds, the 1,000 kilograms will always translate to 20 tons or the one ton of diamond becomes 20 tons of diamond. The spread of resources is gonna be tied to the percentages right here of that entire 20 tons. You will get all the resources here and of course, the spread is right here. That is assuming you have cargo space for each one of the resources. If you do not have the specific resource, in our case, we have three solids here and one gas. If I didn't bring the gas cargo, I'd be able to get 18 tons of solids. However, it will use up all your diamonds. If you happen to not bring the specific cargo module, you will literally just lose the resource and spend the diamond harvesting it. That means that if you want to be efficient, you want to make sure that you bring all the cargo for the different state of the elements required from the point of interest. Now, if it's something like, let's say, carbon dioxide, where it's a gas and I'm really after the wolf for my tungsten and coal, of course, you could sacrifice that. Just understand, though, you're still spending the diamond to do so. Now, if you don't bring the optional cargo module, let's say that in our case, the glimmering asteroid field requires liquid for the tungsten. If I don't happen to bring the solid cargo, I would only get tungsten. However, I would only get about four tons of tungsten in the liquid form as I would use up all of my diamond harvesting the rest. It's kind of like having the items on a rail being delivered to your rocket. And if you don't have space for it, it just becomes lost in time. The thing is, is that when you only harvest a specific amount, that's not the entire 20, you don't subtract 20. So that means that you would get more of your resource by not mining the other resource. Now, it sounds kind of weird. Basically, the game is always going to give you the spread. And it doesn't actually track how much individual resource is being tracked on the specific point of interest. Meaning that if I go here every time to mine the liquid tungsten, I would only get four tons out of my one ton of diamond. However, I would only lower this number by four tons as well. It seemingly doesn't have any effect if you leave the resources on the asteroid field and it does not jumble up the percentages either and the spread is identical to this percentage right here. So you can strategically emit a specific cargo type if you could still utilize the point of interest, which may be tricky because some of them, if they have all solid, you can't really opt out of the mixed spread. Some of them, you may have a gas and solid. By emitting the gas, you would spend more on the solids. So you could try to do that if you guys like to. Hopefully, Clay does put a tooltip on the information box right here of which module is going to be required. That would be amazing. The reason why you're going to want the smaller version is because of one thing. 
Now inside the space for our module, you'll see that we're not actually doing anything special with the layout. It's actually very weird looking, and the reason why for this design is going to be dependent on what you're going to try to utilize. The reason why we want the smaller cargo options for the module for the solid liquid and the gas is because even though the small ones cannot hold the entire capacity of the drill cone, we could actually use the rocketry outputs to store it inside of the spacefarer. By combining that with the combination of infinite pressure, infinite water, infinite gas, and then the debris items could just stack on a tile from a chute, this allows you to circumvent the limit of the individual cargo tanks so that you could store everything inside. This means that you could utilize all of the diamonds in your drill cone every time you make a trip. You're going to want a lot of times one of these infinite options. Now you're not going to utilize all three as we can't fit all three onto the same rocket unless you have liquid hydrogen or the large petroleum engine with liquid oxygen. If you don't have liquid oxygen, you're only going to be able to travel 10 tiles, which means that at most you could go to here and back. So that leaves out a lot of the more attractive resources that might be outside of the range. In my case, I'm using a rad bolt engine that has 20 tiles. So I could go out to here and then come back as well. So we have our rocket. It is just arrived. So once you get your rocket into the star map and launched, it's going to look something like this. Fly over to the point of interest of choice. And over here, we have the organic mass field that starts at 71.4 tons. By clicking on our rocket again, you can see that we have the uh, robo arm animation and of course how much diamond we have and the drilling process. With our setup, I am specifically going to be grabbing the three solids and I'm going to opt to not go for the polluted oxygen. That's going to be because we don't want to get the gas cargo and I don't need pee oxygen anyways. If we go into the inside, you could see that all of the solids are coming out of the conveyor rail. This allows us to have good storage, meaning that we don't have to worry about the uh, cargo bay actually maxing out. And looking at the inside, typically you do want to provide your duplicate with some plus morale since they're going to be out here for a while. This is also a great opportunity, depending on how far you're flying out on your star map, to also do the achievement Moro High Ground. The Moro High Ground achievement requires your duplicate in the rocket to have a higher morale than 25. And a lot of the times, the easiest way to do that is by providing them with the room bonuses, as well as trying to also give them a decent food source. In our case, it's going to be Berry Sludge. Berry Sludge, just like Barbecue, gives you plus 8 morale. Top that off with the 213, that's a total of 6, and that's going to be 14 morale additional. The other 11 morale points could be made up from either Decor or, of course, with the skills. Although it does increase their morale needed, you can just give them skills that they're interested in so that they will increase the morale overall so that you could easily hit the 25. Now, of course, my dupe is also having the uh, trait starry-eyed, which gives us more morale in space. So it's kind of nice for us. Another thing I want to mention is that while harvesting, if you do opt to go for the infinite gas, infinite liquid pressure tank inside the space for a module so that you could extract more of those set resources and the same with this one. You guys might be thinking that it's going to take forever to sweep all the items out, to pump out all the liquid or gas, and that it's going to be a hassle that once you get back, you're going to spend about 10 cycles having to clean up the mess inside the space fair module that we created ourselves. Now, the crazy thing is that you can actually just deconstruct your space fair module once you get back and then rebuild it. Of course, that means you're going to have to relay it out, but everything inside gets auto deconstructed and put into bottled form. So by doing that, you could have a quick strategy to easily reset up your rocket again at launch as you would only lose the space module and you could easily rebuild that. 
Of course, all you need to do is have a good idea of how the layout's going to work, and by doing that, you can have your duplicates that are not in the rocket take care of that on the home asteroid. But guys, that has been the Drocone rocket module. How to utilize it if you guys are running into the issue of the Drocone rocket not going through the animation. Very often, you're going to have the issue of not having the right cargo module, and if you can't hold everything you'll see it over here in the tooltip cannot store the resource that is 10 percent so of course that's 10 percent times or 7.5 kilograms which is 750 grams which is why it's exactly 750 because we do not have the polluted oxygen being captured but if you guys have any questions about this video leave a comment down below hope you guys enjoyed it and of course guys don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys